Hi students. Uh, in lieu of an in-person lab this week, uh, what I've done is I've went ahead and put this week's lab online. Uh, so for my Monday students, you're a little bit familiar with this because you had um, an early lab that was online. Uh, but for my Wednesday students, let me show you uh, a little bit how this is going to work. And then for all of you, I do have some um, tips and hints and things that will make this week's lab uh, a little easier since I am not going to be around. Um, so first of all, looking at this, this is actually a combined module folder for weeks five and six. So we're going to spend uh, two weeks on energy because because in addition to this week, uh, again, not having a uh, lecture today or Wednesday and then an online lab, next week we all have Monday off due to uh, Lincoln's birthday holiday. So I won't see you all until Wednesday uh, for lecture because we're not having labs at all next week. So what I've done is I combined uh, the, this week and next week. So the same topic, we're talking about energy. So for all of the lecture materials, um, I actually have a, a couple of different um, sources here. So actually, as I see this, I'm, well, no, I'll leave those up. You can, you can use that reading. You can also use the reading from your books. Um, I do have uh, energy videos specific to the different types of energies that we're going to be discussing. So uh, I'm not going to go into great detail when I do see you all for lecture um, next week, next Wednesday. I'm not going to go into great detail on all of these different types of energies. These are, uh, this is a really great collection of very short two to three minute videos that describe uh, each type of energy, how essentially we, we generate that electricity, and some of the pros and cons of that. And then I do have uh, notes here from my particular lecture, which again, you'll see part of next week, and then also practice quizzes this week. So that's sort of the, the content that you'll need for the next two weeks. As far as assignments, the only thing you need to do is you need to do your lab quiz, and then you need to do this week's lab. There's no uh, blogging assignment uh, this week, so no blogs. Uh, we're just going to do the online lab and the lab quiz. So once again, the lab quiz is about the food resources lab. Please note for my quizzes if you open it you can't leave and come back and open it again so you have to take it all in one sitting uh, and you are going to need your lab with you so make sure that you have your completed lab with you in order to take this particular quiz all right so looking at energy this week's lab is all about uh, basically looking at two different types of energy we're going to be basically focusing on, on electricity generation and we're also going to be focusing uh, a little bit on on natural gas but mostly we're going to be focusing on electricity generation so um, the lab looks like this so what I'm asking you to do is if you don't already know I want you to figure out where you get your electricity from who's your supplier and also who is your uh, natural gas supplier. Um, so there are some websites that I have put in here that are particularly helpful. And then for later in the lab, I have some additional handouts that I've attached to it that you'll need. Um, but for this one, you can just go to the Illinois uh, Energy Association. So uh, if you just sort of copy and paste this link real quick, it'll take you to a website. And I'm going to show you how to navigate it real quick to get to the maps that show you who your electricity and natural gas providers are. Um, so you're going to go to a, oh, no, not about us. Give me just a second. Um, all right, let me think about this for a minute. See, this is when you haven't done this lab in a while. You have to remember how it works. Um, Go to, oh, it's under links, sorry. Ha, huh. it took me a second. <laughs> I just did this uh, lab last fall. You'd think I could remember. Uh, you go to links and you go to down here where it says utility maps and legislative districts. Huh. Let's go to natural gas first. So here's your natural gas map and it is color coded and it's color coded based on our different providers. So all of your providers are here on the left and then the color coding is sort of associated with where you are. Now, we also have Senate and House representative borders. That's what all these numbers mean. So it can get slightly uh, tricky. Um, but basically, if you consider this Cook County right here, we're somewhere in this area right here. OK, so these districts 55, 54, 57, 55 and 56. This is approximately our area, um, unless you live in the city or unless you live on the North Shore, you, you might have a different area. So in any way, you should be able Able to look at this color coding and say, oh, I happen to be NICOR gas or whatever it happens to be. Um, you're going to do the same thing for electricity. 
So again, here's the electricity map. This one's a little bit more clear as far as who your electricity provider goes. So very simple. Once again, uh, I was here at the Illinois Energy Association homepage and you go to links. So I apologize it took me that long to remember where I was. Uh, so that's one part of the lab. So you're going to uh, tell us who your suppliers are. And then once you do that, you're going to figure out who your electricity provider gets their electricity from. So let's say your electricity provider was ComEd. ComEd has something called an environmental disclosure report. So you're going to want to do a Google search for ComEd environmental disclosure statement and probably 2022. There isn't anything from 2023 yet. Um, you're going to want to find the one that's as recent as possible. Uh, this one is 9330. That's fine. That was the end of September. So here's the disclosure report. And the really nice thing about disclosure report, it's got a lot of information on here. But what we really want to know is we want to know where ComEd is getting electricity from. What type of electricity providers are they getting it from? So you have a nice little pie chart here, and then you also have it in a table where it tells you where it's coming from, right? So uh, nuclear, natural gas, hydro, coal, wind, solar, whatever it happens to be, okay? So this particular report is going to let you know um, where ComEd is getting electricity from or whatever provider. So that'll help you answer question number two. Uh, questions number three and four, I just want you to figure out how far away coal burning power plants and nuclear plants are from your house. So those are those are Google searches. Um, what are the top three renewable sources of electricity? This goes back to the environmental disclosure report. So you'll need to know a little bit of content for this question. You're going to need to know what the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy is. So please make sure you understand that before you try to answer that question. You can once again go back here uh, to the environmental disclosure report. That's going to help you answer that question. And then how much more uh, electricity is being purchased from non-renewable sources than renewable sources. And again, you can get all of that information from the disclosure report. Uh, next, I'm going to have you use a couple of additional PDF documents that I'm providing with you to figure out how much it costs to produce different types of electricity. Uh, nuclear, fossil steam is coal, uh, hydroelectric, and then gas turbine and so small scale. This is like wind and photovoltaics and things like that. For that, you're going to come back to where the lab is and you're going to open average power plant operating expenses. So I've got that file right here. And you're going to use this uh, particular um, table of information to tell you that. And again, I've oops, I've totaled these things um, for you, so you can you can actually look at you know in the latest year here are the totals, how much did it cost? And so all of that information is here. You just kind of have to very carefully look at the tables, and then it breaks down the type of energy by the different categories. So operation maintenance uh, and fuel costs okay and then we have a total category here so you'll use this particular file uh, to help you answer uh, the questions uh, again number eight number nine and number ten and then for the next part you're going to do energy production and global warming you're going to fill out this table with some fairly simple math but there is a little bit of math involved you're going to use the other file that i have which is this greenhouse gas emissions of electricity generation so we have um, two different categories here, stack emissions and other steps in the life cycle. This is a measure of how much greenhouse gases are being produced. So for coal, oil, natural gas, and then for other types of energy here. In order to fill this table in uh, for the greenhouse gas emission rate, you just need to take the, the average. So the simplest way uh, to do that, to take that average, is to add these numbers up. So for coal, you would add up 278. 79, 48, and 216, uh, and then you would just divide um, by four. Okay, so that would that would give you an average. Um, so that would be kind of the easiest way to do that, and then that would give you your average greenhouse gas emission rate. Then for one day, you multiply that number times 30. Then for one year, you multiply this number times 365. And then for 30 years, you multiply this number by 30, right? And I've done one for you just as an example, okay? So you're going to fill out that table, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to look at, again, which renewable sorts of energy has the highest and lowest greenhouse rates, and then you're going to talk a little bit about nuclear.
Okay. Um, the next two sections are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I want you to think about green buildings. I, I give you some features of green buildings and what are things we should look for and what a green campus might look like if we were focused on this idea of, of having things that um, were um, less, used less energy and were more efficient. So I'm asking you to think about, you know, what do we have here on Harper that we that we do well with and, and what areas do we need to improve and then last but not least this is called a green campus uh, scavenger hunt and this is something you can do any day that you happen to be on campus because you have plenty of time to fill this out what I want you to figure out is I want you to find things that Harper is doing um, to be to be green and more sustainable where are we saving energy where are we saving water where are we uh, what things are we doing to be um, efficient when it comes to our air quality or providing community and places for gathering for students. I want you to try to find 10 things on campus. And it can be really simple things like, oh, in the bathrooms we have faucets that are um, turn on and off with motion, right? So there's motion sensor faucets. That's a way we can save water. Uh, we have lights that turn off in rooms uh, when people aren't in them. That's a way we can save energy. So these are fairly simple things. Uh, again, you should be able to come up with 10, but uh, as long as you have at least five, uh, you'll still be fine. So that is this week's lab. So that's an overview of this week's lab. Uh, and again, in addition to this file, you will need those other files which are attached here, the average power plant operating expenses, and the greenhouse gas emissions um, electricity generation. Again, I am going to be somewhat available by email, but I am at a conference. Uh, it starts tomorrow and it goes through the end of the week. If you do have a very specific question, you can absolutely still ask me. You're just going to have to give me a little bit more time to get back to you because I'll pretty much only be checking emails in the evenings during my breaks. So, uh, but I will, I will get back to you on what I can. Uh, and that pretty much does it for the, the lab. The, and again, don't forget the lab quiz also. Make sure you have your food resources lab with you when you take it. Uh, that should be all. And good luck to everybody.